Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Oscar York of Chatting from the Word, and this is our TV program. And of course, if you can remember, our subtopic was practical. Might have to get it right <laughs> because last week I said political, but it's practical moments, practical applications for practical living and practical eating. And you may have guessed why we call it practical eating. We had to add that little divot in, tidbit in there so that we can really come and accumulate with the show just fine. And we hope that many of you are watching the show. But let me show uh, you what I'm eating this morning. Okay. I'm eating. Well, let me move my, my silverware because I won't, it won't fall in your face there. <laughs> I'm eating two porched eggs. Sausages cut up in thin slices, toast, and my famous grapes. Amen and, and amen. And I hope you enjoy me. In, enjoying in. <laughs> I hope that you are joining me for your breakfast this morning. So have your breakfast laid out too and ready to eat with Brother Oscar anytime you watch the program. But today we are taping it because we want to make sure that we are. Bring in the you the finest show that we can put on on uh, this morning, and I, I'm so thankful that many of you are watching the program. We we had over a hundred, I believe, a hundred and thirty so far that have watched the show on last Monday, but too many are not subscribing to the show or give me a thumbs up. So you all that are watching the show, all have watched the show, go back. Go back and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the show. And when you subscribe to the show, you will see a bell. Hit that bell and you will be notified when we are filming or on the air. So we hope and pray that you are enjoying this program that we have put on. As many of you... May or may not know, Brother Oscar is a diabetic, and he has to kind of be cautious of what he eats. And lately I have. Lately uh, I have. I don't know why, but I have. Like That's why I pushed my eggs. I dry toast. <laughs> dry toast is good. <laughs> and sausages. So uh, if you want them to have diabetes, this sometimes it's just good to control your diabetes just by eating right. Of course, many say exercise, which is good if you can, uh, or by uh, eating right, exercising, sleeping well, uh, and going to bed at a reasonable time, and all that. That will help you to combat your uh, diabetes if you're a diabetic, and many of us are. And diabetes is a, how can I put this, it's a catalyst of every other disease we do get, uh, problems we have. Uh, diabetes contribute to heart problems, contribute to flow of blood, contribute to having uh, ulcers and cancers. So if you're one of them that are a diabetic like myself, it's just best to uh, watch what you eat, exercise, enough rest, and stay away from stressful, stressful situation. Again, we are so delighted that you're with us today. And we are trying to uh, bring this show. Uh, this show is a practical program. It's not a program to uh, 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 give any strong advice. But our advice comes from the Word of God. And Brother Oscar is going to let you know that right from the beginning. Our pattern and what we go by and why and where we get all of our suggestions is from the Word of God. And that's where Brother Oscar will be coming from this morning. And of course, we're coming from uh, Genesis, the second and third chapter, where, uh, of course, uh, Adam and Eve got together. God created Eve for Adam. And, uh, and of course, the temptation of eating of the tree, and not the temptation only, but eating of the tree that God told them not to eat. And today we want to talk about, uh, what's that word, you all? <laughs> Influences. 
Because Brother Oscar believes our influences sometimes can hurt us, especially our marriage. So just stay tuned to Brother Oscar as he tries to teach this lesson. But before we get off into this lesson, we want to take a little bite of our breakfast. So we want to uh, bless the food. Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, be thy name. For we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your blessings that you have brought our way. We thank you, Father, for this program. Help Brother Oscar to keep it on. Help Brother Oscar be a light in every community he is heard in or seen. And Father, bless our food in which we are about to partake, that we may it may be used for nursing it, meant for our food. Uh, for our bodies, in Jesus' name, uh, do we pray. Amen. And amen. And if you have a plate of food in front of you, you can eat too. Enjoy your meal. Enjoy your healthy, good, practical meal. We're going to play a little music while we are uh, enjoying our little meal, if that's all right with you. I hope everyone got a chance to eat a little bit while we play this song. We, we love that song. God's grace and mercy. God's grace and mercy brought us through. And it's true through his mercy and his grace that we are here. And that the Lord has blessed us all to uh, be here. I hope you don't mind. Brother Oscar going to snack while he talked to you this morning. Mmm, that's good. Again, we're so delightful that you're with us today. And as I say, our study, our studies can come from Genesis. And if you have a copy of God's Word while you're at your dinner table, dinette table, whatever the case may be, pull your Bibles out so that you can uh, study along with your brother here, brother. Oscar York. I'm turning my pages. Yes, I am. And uh, we are going to base our application off of Genesis, the second, and I believe the second, I'm still turning, <laughs> the second and third chapter. And if you've been with us for quite some time, uh, on this program here, you know we've been talking about marriage, marriage, and I don't believe the best person that can give us some answers for a healthy marriage, I believe it's God, because God is the one that institute uh, marriage right from the beginning, and I truly believe that Adam and Eve had a good marriage, so though they had this problem here with the serpent. And as we said last week, you notice that the serpent uh, finally, uh, uh, finally, what the word I'm trying to use here, finally convinced Eve to, first of all, look at the fruit, and then to desire the fruit, and then the most important thing was to bite of the fruit. The fruit. And that was the deadly part. And the most more deadly part. And when she gave it to her husband to eat. So this morning I, I, I just want to show you the sequences of how this came about. And I and, and don't think Brother Oscar is trying to talk bad about anyone. Because I'm not. I'm just going by what the scripture says. And that's the best thing Brother Oscar can do. Is go by what the Lord has says to us through and in His Word, and I just want to bring up some factors that that may surprise you. It surprised me too until I started looking at it 
from a different angle. And I did this early this morning and later on, yet on yesterday, I looked at it from a different angle. And if you like me, you, you, you see these angles uh, that the Bible is written in. And we know that the first book, which is Genesis, Moses wrote that book. That was one of the things I believe God shared with Moses when he was up on Mount Sinai. And I believe it plays a part in that too, the timing and when the book was written and why it mentioned things like the, the four rivers and all that. But here, if you look at it closely, and maybe in the first and some of the second chapter, the Bible talks about God. It says God made this. God did that. God did this. But later on, it changes its noun and, and use a verb along with that. And then it said, the Lord God, the Lord God. In other words, that, and, and we should read, many of us probably have already figured this out. Because John 1.1 1, 1 said that Christ was with God in the beginning. And nothing wasn't made without him. And in this point, we see Lord God. And the Lord God always have been Jesus Christ. And we know Jesus Christ was in the beginning. He created everything. He created uh, uh, Adam. He created uh, the, the garden Adam was in. He created everything. He created the animals for uh, Adam to name. And this is one fact I want to bring up too. And since we're talking about influences, we must recognize that all this time, the serpent was there, but he could never influence Adam to eat off that tree. And I believe the reason why he couldn't, and I believe this could bear a light on why God, the Lord God, created the animals before he created a woman, although God created them. But God brought the animals to Adam to see what he would name them. And Adam named the serpent a serpent for a reason. And the reason was because he recognized that that serpent was the most gullible and the most subtle animal that God created. So he called him a serpent. But Eve, and, and what we must recognize, this was before Eve uh, was created. Eve was not created then, okay, when Adam was naming all the animals. So Eve would not be aware of the serpent, subtle and gullible ways, but Adam was. And that's why Adam did not never eat off that fruit. But that, the point is, that serpent influenced Eve to partake of that tree. The serpent influenced, let me repeat that, the serpent influenced Eve to eat all that tree. And the serpent knew that he was not going to influence Adam. The serpent knew the only way you get to Adam was through his wife. And brothers and sisters, especially our brothers, isn't that the way it is in our marriage sometimes? When we know what's right to do, and we see what's right to do, but we won't do that right, or do it what's right. And sometimes it takes our wives, if it's right, to need us to do what's right. And sometimes the wife may be wrong, and sometimes she still be needing, 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 needing us to do what's wrong. So sometimes, my friends, we have to depend on the word of God. We have to depend on that. What does he say? What do God says? And I believe in the marriage, I believe God should be our influence, our first influence. But you know what? Have you ever noticed, and this is what scientists have found out, that when a baby, before he must come into the world, when he's in his mother's womb, he's influenced. The influence is there. And what is the influence? The influence of mother and the influence of the father. Because they say a baby can hear things even in the womb. 
So in other words, we are pushing our influences on our children before they even must come out the, out the room, if that be a factor. And I believe it could be, sure. I believe it's a possibility. So that baby comes in we're already influenced to be what he is and how he is. So, so when he comes out the womb, we influence him to smile, to laugh, to frown, to whatever. And then later on, we influence him to say little words, ga-ga, uh, papa, mama, again, influence. And then later on, we influence the baby to walk. He crawls, and then we influence and show him how to walk. And then later on, the baby start putting words together better, start walking better. And then some of us may say, he's just like you, Susan. And then Susan might say, no, Harry, he's just like, or uh, she's just like you. You know that to be the truth. So our influences in the beginning of a child's life have a lot to do with the way they think and the way they may do things. And I know sometimes we don't think about that, but that is true. That, that's, that's the truth. You know, some people wonder, how did this person turn out like they did? You got to look far back, my friends. You got to look far, far back than, than just being around mom and dad as he is out the womb, but look far back to the womb and see why. What was around this baby? What did you uh, say uh, to the baby as he was in the womb? And all that plays a very important part when it comes to influences. And many of us today, we are influenced too. Many of us today are influenced sometimes by what we see on TV. We are influenced by our friends. We are influenced by our loved ones. And as I just said, we are influenced by our parents. Influences goes a long way, further than what we may think. And we can be influenced to do what's right, or we can be influenced to do what's bad. I remember when I first became a member of the Church of Christ, uh, at that time I was a young man, maybe 16, 15, 16, and going through changes like young people does. And of course I had a lot, a lot, of, a lot of answers about life and things that, that goes on in life. And a neighbor of my name, we, we call her sis, uh, uh, Miss Louise. We never called her Louise because that's the way she was a friend of our mother's, and my mother always introduced in the beginning was Miss Louise. So Miss Louise had came in one time and asked me what was wrong. I said, Miss Louise, why the world turn like this? Why do things happen like like they do in the world today, Miss Louise? I'm just, I was just wondering about that. And she said that Bo, let me tell you, and that was she called. They called me Bo back then. But she said, let me, I tell you what I can do. She said, I don't have all the answers for you. But I know someone that may have the answers. And he, he, uh, she, she had told me about their minister, uh, who was a very wise guy for his age at the time. And his name was Thomas Foster. And I salute you, Thomas Foster, if you're listening to the program. And Thomas Foster had a, a impact in my life, uh, influence.